It's called direct primary care, an innovative approach to delivering medical services. And now a new report from the John Locke Foundation concludes that if we used direct primary care more, we'd see better outcomes for patients with chronic diseases. And further, we could actually cut the incidence and severity of disabilities. Catherine Restrepo is the author of this new policy report. She's the Director of Healthcare Policy for the Locke Foundation. Catherine, welcome back. Thank you. Before we talk about the details, and this is pretty exciting because mm-hmm. you're talking about having a real impact on, yes. uh, on people's health, uh, explain to us what DPC, as it's known, really mm-hmm. is. How does it work? Yeah, direct primary care, DPC, as you say, it's it's like a healthcare gym membership. Just think of it that way. So in exchange for a monthly fee, an average monthly fee is $75 for a patient. In return for that fee, that patient has around-the-clock care to their primary care physician. Um, and it, it also includes this defined package of basic primary care services. So that can be EKG testing, that can be skin biopsies, um, joint injections, comprehensive annual physicals, and the list can really go on. And they and these doctors also um, offer generic medications. They can prescribe them in North Carolina and in 44 other states, for that matter, in-house. And they can also uh, negotiate um, discounts with with lab companies uh, at wholesale cost to to do labs. You could actually text your doctor or email your doctor yep, and text, get a quick response. Email your doctor, and you know, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of primary care um, practices where you have patient portals, and you can check in with your doctor through a patient portal and look at your electronic medical record. But the key difference here is that these doctors they are so price transparent, and they're making health care much more affordable for low and middle income families who are struggling to pay for their health insurance premiums. And that's simply because they do not accept insurance. They're completely removing primary care from insurance. And that whole concept can make health insurance so much more affordable for more people. Now, you've been digging into the data on this, and it's a fascinating report. It's available at johnlock.org. You've been looking at what would happen if we not only increase the use of direct primary care, Mm -hmm. but what's been happening from the providers who are already using it. And you say that if we used it more, we could actually help folks who have these chronic diseases. Explain that. Yes, and when you look at this model, people think, oh, this model, it's it's similar to concierge medicine. These doctors charge a premium. People have to have disposable income to have this around-the-care access and be able to afford that. But we're only healthy, you know, these doctors are only cherry-picking healthy patients Uh, that have the money to access them. But that's really quite the opposite. Um, If you look at this model, the patients really that would benefit the most, who would get the most out of their monthly healthcare gym membership, if you you want to refer to it as that, are people with multiple chronic conditions. I mean, nationwide, more than one in two people are diagnosed with just one chronic disease. Um, More have, I mean, so many people have multiple uh, or known as comorbid patients. And when you can spend more time, I mean, time is the value here in the direct care model. When you can spend more time with your physician, that improves access to care, and it can really reduce health care costs downstream, the specialty care visits, the ho- unnecessary hospitalization visits, or unnecessary uh, referrals to specialists as well. So let's just be clear, too, when you're talking about people who have chronic issues and multiple issues, mm-hmm. let's say maybe someone has high blood pressure, right, diabetes, diabetes, Mm -hmm. maybe they've got a problem with their thyroid. So they've got these different conditions that are all affecting them in different ways. And you're saying if they use direct primary care and have this very easy um, access to their doctor, it really keeps it under control better? Yes, because there are, I mean, 50% of people with high blood pressure or in the report, it will state other statistics that there are a high percentage of people who have chronic conditions and you can have a chronic condition and can be managed. It can be managed well, meaning you're, you're in compliance with your medications. You're going to see your primary care physician. You're engaged with your health. You're managing your disease well. Um, But there are many people out there simply because of the access and time issues that many patients are facing in the healthcare system where they have these chronic conditions and they're not being controlled. They're not controllable. And that's, again, because of lack of time. So more an investment at the primary care level, more time with their physician can really rein in the spending on on patients with healthcare or with chronic conditions 
and improve the patient's overall health. So in the policy report, you kind of lay out the data uh, that you just Mm -hmm. described, but you also then say that if we were able to do this, and the fact that um, this helps people and would help more people manage um, chronic issues, it's going to lead to a lesser number of people who have disabilities. Mm -hmm. How is that? Well, because if you have chronic conditions and they go untreated or go unmanaged, that can lead to disabilities. For example, um, kids with asthma, I mean, that can lead to limited mobility, limited activity they can do. Um, I mean, people who are diabetic and their holistic care is not taken care of in a timely or an appropriate matter, that can lead to foot amputations or, or other problems, which leads to other disabilities. This sounds really exciting to me. It really yes. does, because I happen to have a number of people in my family who are dealing with mm-hmm. multiple issues, and it's a problem. They're constantly trying to see different doctors, and the doctors are having to uh, talk about how the medications interact and all that. It, right. it can become a really yeah, exactly. issue. exactly, and I mean, it can have such a greater impact for, I mean, because the report also spells out, and a lot of academic medical literature says that there's more of a stronger association with lower income people having, um, you know, being diagnosed with chronic illnesses. And that, again, goes back to lack of access, adequate access to health care. And if this were incorporated into Medicaid somehow, where there's still, you know, you still have preserved that relationship between the physician and the patient, Um, This can really be an impact for for taxpayers, you know, that are funding Medicaid and more importantly for the Medicaid patients themselves. There's so many aspects to this whole thing. And one of them that you write about, Catherine, is um, the issue of government actually using this. I know that you have talked previously about wouldn't it be interesting if the state health plan perhaps Mm -hmm. took advantage of this. But we know that Union County the government employees in Union County have yes. access to this as an option. How's it working? Yes, they do. it's been working great. Um, within one year, they've saved over $1 million in health care claims, and that's just on 44 to 48% of Union County workers that have chosen a direct care physician as their primary care provider. And again, this... These direct care physicians, they don't accept insurance, but the great thing about Union County or from an employer's standpoint is that when they offer direct care as a value-added benefit option, it still works alongside their traditional health insurance plan, so they can still have access to specialists in network that their health plan offers for specialty care or hospital care. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, it's a true wrap, what people call a wraparound policy. So everything wraps around the insurance plan itself that's designed by Union County because they are a self-insured employer, meaning they're, they're at risk for all the claims they incur by their, their workers. Um, you know, they, they're able to restructure their health care benefits where it wraps around primary care benefits and it just includes specialty and, and, and things for catastrophic or Last, unforeseen medical events. Lastly, Catherine, how prevalent is this in terms of the number of doctors who are going this route, just mm-hmm. saying no to insurance, I'm going to deal with my yeah, patients? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's growing for sure. I mean, still very niche market. I mean, only about... 30 doctors are practicing in the state of North Carolina, maybe between three and 5,000 nationwide, depending on if it's considered pure direct care, if they don't accept insurance, or if that's a concierge doctor who does do insurance but charges that monthly retainer fee.